Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This is a bit of a new location. So currently I'm at my parents' house and this is mostly my mom's bookshelf. Today we are going to do a review on one of my latest reads, When We Are Orphans by Kazuo Ishiguro. I do have some notes with me to, to help me make a bit of sense and keep this a bit organized. What is this book about? Well, the story is that in the 30s, in London, where we follow Christopher Banks, a renowned private detective. We quickly learn that he was brought up in Shanghai alongside his Japanese friend, Akira. Early on, he starts to reminisce about his memories as a child and question them. And after a night out and a deep discussion, he starts to wonder what really happened when his parents disappeared when he was about nine. So this could be his quest throughout the book to find what was really behind the sudden disappearance of his parents. Okay, so what did I think of the book? So overall I did enjoy the book. I gave it three stars as Christopher is an interesting lead character that builds up tension and mystery throughout his quest, despite him having many flaws like romanticizing the past, being unsure of his memories, and perhaps giving a new qualities or maybe misremembering what was really spoken and being staying basically alone. So despite at heart being a mystery slash detective novel, it's less about the chase and more about unveiling the different layers of his memories and seeing as you grew up that perhaps you were very far from the big picture and slowly realizing that perhaps people were not really as good as you thought they were or that perhaps you completely misjudged someone or something based on what they, they did at the time without having the full background what was really happening behind the scenes so the writing on a technical aspect i would say it was pretty smooth so not as interesting and a flowery as in remains of the day but it does function quite well in the, in the story because it's more story driven than really reflective or being inspiring in what you are telling your reader we also have a really reduced cast of characters that really play somewhat of a role in the story. I won't give you the plot points for each, but basically you get around 10 characters throughout the, the story. So you get Christopher, both of his parents, his uncle, his friend Akira. Um, you get Miss Hemmings and her husband that are both friends of Christopher. And you get also someone else close to Christopher. So I won't spoil who or the connection and because it plays also a big role Shanghai and at a lower level London come to be considered a character Shanghai can be considered also a main character because of the role it played in Christopher's upbringing and also the way Michigoro gives the city many qualities and that it can sometimes act as a character The next bit will be spoilery so I'll skip to this time if you don't want to know what happens and not want to get spoiled on the ending. To build up a bit on my opinion on the book, the whole let's call it police work. So basically what happens is Christopher sees a newspaper article, looks at the picture, remembers some guy from the picture, calls up a few of his contacts, they say yeah, it's that guy. He goes to see a retired policeman who identifies this guy and where he lives. Christopher finds the address, goes to the house. And that's it. This is really reduced, but to me that's like for Miss Minogue, it was a bit thin on the the police work. Even if I'm not a fan of going like into all the details and like listing all the all the things you could find at the crime scene, but this really felt like it was a bit shoved on the side, like okay, we just need a plot to advance and it was really feeling a bit too easy for something that lasted about twenty years. And it just it was full with just one one talk with a retired policeman from back in the day when the parents still appeared. Really connected to this issue, the pacing of the ending is also a bit off. On what like 10, 20 pages, you get everything basically. What happened to his father, what happened to his mother, you get all the explanation of why it happened. You get Christopher basically going back to see his mom and having a bit of closure with her and also you don't really see him getting closer with his dad. Maybe he doesn't really really care because the father is dead. But yeah, just to really seem 
to go too fast, like if if you go long there just to get done with it and move on to the next because I've read online that even he thinks that this book is a bit weak and perhaps at some point he just decided to go on and finish the story perhaps as fast as possible with staying maintaining his style and maintaining a bit of sense. Yeah checking back my notes. The only struggle very from Christopher was dealing with his memories and not really dealing with anything related to his detective skills or powers. There was a storyline about the opium that really was to me the most interesting, so seeing and hearing him talk always about his mom fighting against opium dealers and the way it would corrupt government and involve gangsters and stuff. That was for me the most interesting part and it was reduced to not much. And we don't really even know if it was real because at the, in the first third of the book we see Christopher going to the museum um, looking at all the newspapers and he tells us that he found found in nowhere is the name of his mother associated with fighting opium despite Christopher presenting his mom as a let's say white knight against opium all, all the time. So in a sense we know that Christopher is an unreliable narrator because he is misremembering a lot of things and perhaps his mom never really fought against the opium market and he just constructed some alternate reality based on what he perceived when he was a child back in Shanghai. Yeah, it's some, some sort of idealization of his parents. Continuing on Christopher Falls, he's also not that nice of a guy. So for example, he throws basically what is a, a child's tantrum at the police station with the, the soldiers and he he demands basically all the soldiers, all the weapons, all do everything to go to this house, this abandoned house in the middle of the battlefield. And he asks almost them to abandon their their current positions and help him. And he asks that by saying who he is, if he's got the authority to do it or anything. The whole thing just got up because I don't think as an English detective he has any authority on like the, the soldiers there and Mr. Mills yeah, really felt like a child wanting to, to get his pack of sweet at the, the cashier there at the supermarket. I gave this book three stars to say it again, but it's still an interesting and a good book. And I think you should read it if you're interested in the exploration of memories and how they are shaped throughout our life and being polished by time and for example keep the best and the positive aspects and really remove all the negativity and a bit of context in them and seeing how the positive and negative would shift when you really remove hindsight and when you get the bigger pictures so if you don't really read a lot of mystery or thriller or detective novel and you don't really like detailed police work of combing through files and interviews knocking on neighbors doors and asking a lot of questions and this is for you because police work does really play a light role and it's really in the background if you are interested in a discussion on identity without spoiling too much of the story you have Christopher, an Englishman raised in Shanghai alongside his Japanese best friend Akira they are living in an international settlement so separated from the let's call them the general population of Shanghai at the time where the relations between China and Japan are not the best. So we get to experience multiple point of views and you will see the impact of real life events on the on the story and how it did shake up Christopher's life. So to finish this review, I will go to a let's call it a rapid fire round of pros and cons so organizing non spoilery parts and spoilery parts. First the non spoilery part so it was a good exploration of memory and now we can use it to shield ourselves from reality and basically mold everything to fit our own narrative. On the other hand, for my taste, everything is resolved a bit too fast. And yeah, that's it basically for the non spoilery parts onto the spoilery part. So I think my biggest issue facing up to the last 10% of the book where we get all our answers. Yeah, the most interesting storyline to me was the opium bit and it was not really delved into and I would have been more interested in basically reading Christopher's mom fighting against the opium dance rather than this. <laughs> that was a throwback. This 
apart from Christopher, barely any character matters. They're just basically just here to help Christopher and they don't really evolve or grow. A good point on the other end is that we do get early answers, we do get closure for both the parents and for most of the major plot points. His yeah, writing is good, it's smooth, it's effective and drives the point across. We we'll get answers, we we'll get them fast, and we we'll get them clear. Overall, it's a good book, don't get me wrong. It has many flaws and it's been described as perhaps one of Ishiguro's weakest book. It's still we could say an Ishiguro, so it does have a level of quality above one of the mere thrillers and detective novels, but for the usual standard, I mean, when you get a book price, your standard is a bit higher than everyone else's, so you do create an expectation, even if I believe this was written perhaps before, like when people are reading your works, they always expect everything to be on par with your best work, so it's, it's a good book and I really would recommend it. Again, if you're interested in the discussion on memory, perhaps cultural identity, and a lighter detective novel, so don't hesitate to tell me in the comments what you thought of the book, and if you also believe that it was Ishiguro's weakest novel. In the meantime, take care. Bye.